Well, good morning. Good morning. It's nine straight up. And we are here. We are kind of in a secluded place because we have something big going. Yes, big we and do. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to jump on and just share a little bit with you. Now, did you know the things that you do each day, every single decision you make, can perhaps what? The decisions I make today will be your, no, the, um, the choices that you make today uh -huh. will be the decisions you make for the future. Yes, they can affect everything. So everything we do in life today, every experience, every fall, every victory, everything. Everything you read, everything, you know, your mind's eye sees, everything that you do. Your decision or non-decision. A non-decision is still a decision. Right, very true. I like that. That's very. That's a good point because so many times we stay in the gray area. We stay on the fence and we're not sure how to make the decision when what we don't realize is we're making no decision. Well, no, you are making a decision. By not making a decision, you are making a decision. I should say that, yes. And that is very going true. to affect whatever you do in that category or in that topic in uh, six months, a year, five years, ten years. So if you choose to decide to, I don't know, let's say uh, eat french fries every day. Um, no, is that going to affect you today or tomorrow? It may affect you if you have you know, celiac problems or if you have other food uh, intolerances. But if you're having french fries every day, I mean, that could affect you, you know, five, ten years down the road. Mm -hmm. Very true. Or if you choose to speed down the highway every single day. Sooner or later, the law averages that you're going to either get a ticket, you're going to pay more for insurance, or you can even get in an accident. So that is, you know, those are decisions you're making today by speeding or by eating the French fries, for two examples, are going to affect you, which you know, without you realizing it today. Right. What I really like to use is the how you and I have been reading all these different books. We we've, we've been reading different personal development books different books on like you you mentioned Elon Musk before Elon Musk I pronounced Elon that wrong Musk. Elon Musk and then who else did you read about Henry Ford you've read which is yep. Jeff Bezos and I just actually downloaded uh, this one maybe a little much I just downloaded it yesterday I should have looked at it a little bit more it's uh, regarding uh, George Washington oh interesting it is interesting which is gonna also a little intimidating because I do audible and I think we talked about how we do audible at one at 1.25 or one and a half times speed it's a little bit faster your brain can still pick it up and you'll still understand it but even at 1.25 or one and a half speed this George Washington book <laughs> no, it's what? 41 hours oh my gosh okay. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty big novel it, it's pretty intense on George Washington's life from a child all the way through and everything that he's done so hopefully I'll be able to give you guys some uh, little <laughs> tidbits of information In <laughs> <laughs> that's good but well it's amazing though what you're going to learn from his philosophy his thought on life when you get through the 41 <laughs> hours but also the the different ones that we keep learning we keep pouring into and it's amazing the little tidbits we get and then we shift something in our lives which affects our tomorrow so mm -hmm. it's it's a good thing and then we have to ask you want to say hi to everyone well i can't see really there's too it's much of a glare of, it is a glare so sorry guys <laughs> sorry it's hello everybody glare. yes but and it's really as we go into these things and as we learn things that are affect our tomorrow are we learning at only 80 percent or are we learning at 100 percent so i love that analogy is if you're only giving a hundred or i'm sorry 80 percent rather than a hundred and then you say oh i'll do the other 20 tomorrow which i do with certain things that i don't like that i don't enjoy doing as you know mm -hmm. i'll clean a closet but then i'll store all the stuff i don't want to deal with in a box in that closet i'll deal with it later and that's the 20 percent it's still sitting there right. so do it a hundred percent right and have it done well the, one of the other ways i fail at doing giving a hundred percent is let's say if i'm going uh, out for a run or if i'm going to the gym and i'm getting to that last rep of that last set or i'm just getting to the last part of that section of the run i'm doing i'll stop five no four or five steps ahead or I won't give my lat my mind won't be in those last one or two reps and I gotta push through that finish line I gotta get that finish line I gotta at least go two three steps past the finish line before I start walking yes and that reminds me of a an event we went to 
and um, Brian was our coach then and Chrissy was there and a bunch of people but they had uh, what was that board like a half inch or a one inch board was it I think considered? It was one inch. And they taught us they put all the things we had to write down on the back of the board all the things that were stopping us in life and we had to just put it on in pencil and we wrote it there and what they taught us to do we had to swing back and I should post that video again of me because you have to swing back and with your bare fist you have to bust through it and I kept going to hit it and finally Brian stopped me and said you have to break through it and it was so true once I took my fist back and I knew I had to bust through those things rather than just hit the things rather than stopping before you finish the run but go through giving it you know a hundred percent then I was able to bust through but not until he said that don't stop at the finish line go through it mm -hmm. so that's such a huge analogy in life so well it's like if you're reading a book are you gonna stop before the last chapter yeah never I always have to finish it even if it's and I, I sometimes get really bored with it I'll have to put it down but I always feel like there's got to be a reason even if it's a boring book what is the purpose of this book you gotta make a completion yeah. yes so complete if, everything complete yes. you know a good day at work complete you know your race complete your uh, your bicycle ride now, whatever you're doing, complete the book, complete cleaning the closet completely. Don't leave it in a Don't box. Don't leave the one box. <laughs> and I need to just throw out the box because clearly I'm not doing anything with the, everything in that little box that I put in there. Mm -hmm. So, yes, sometimes we need the permission to do it 100%. So go 100% well, in guess, everything. I guess some things you do, we still do 100% without realizing it. Do you empty the dishwasher 100%? Yes, of course. You know, that would drive me crazy a couple spoons in there <laughs> it's, okay it's driving and it's driving me crazy in what i'm doing to myself by stopping those two three four steps before the finish line yeah that's what i need to get to very true very true so everything we go through we grow ourselves and if we go a hundred percent rather than the eighty percent imagine how much we grow because you're in a sense busting through that board breaking through the board which that was a big thick board and we all did it so i was proud of us and it also helps us to learn the lesson. What are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm, proud, I'm proud of you that you got through it. I have to post that video because it's so fun. I was pulling back and I just didn't want to break my hand. That's what I kept thinking. But also when we do the 100%, when we read the book fully, your 41 hour book, we learn the lesson and then we can share it out, mm -hmm. which is so fun to share it out because then people are like, how can I put that into my life? Right. How can I use it? And as Ann was saying, you know, maybe in a month I can report back on the 41 hours. I don't think it's going to be a month because if it was a month, again, I use a lot of different numbers and I calculate things in my head. And as you said that, that's, you know, one full week of eight hours a day listening to it. So if it's a month, you're probably looking at two, three hours a day. I don't know if I have enough time to do two, three hours a day to yeah. finish it in a month. I'll try, to, book. <laughs> I'll try to get it done in two to three months and I'll give you tidbits along the way. Great. That'd be if, great. If and when I'm invited back. Yeah, <laughs> you're always invited. <coughs> but I, I say you got to do it 100. percent And if you, and also if you're watching a friend, if you're watching a friend go through it and they're not wanting to give 100 percent, so often, and I know I'm so guilty of it. We want to come up next to them. We want to help them. We can help them, but we can't do it for them because then they're not going to learn the lesson. All right. You gotta. You can come alongside them, teach them how to fish, but don't fish for them. Right. And I know a lot of times I'll be like, I'll oh, just help you out here. You know, we got to let them learn the lesson. So would you rather have a cushy life or an experienced life? Would you rather go 100% or stop at the 80%? Yeah, it's easy to say, oh, give me the cushy life. Yeah, but you're no, not going to, no I one know. will, I don't think you'd feel satisfied. Right. You wouldn't learn internally, the lesson. You, yeah, you, internally, you wouldn't feel satisfied with a cushy life. You're just going to go through the motions. Right. You're going to go to the, the country club four or five hours a day. You're going to go golfing, or you're going to sit in the clubhouse, or you're going to go, you're going to do something, and it's just not going to be fulfilling. Right. And it's funny that you say that, because when we had lunch with Dion and John and Renee, Renee, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, they're from Africa. South Af Africa. South Africa, Afrikaans, they call it.
A to B, you're standing there, but you haven't learned the lessons that have brought you there. So you have to keep, what are you laughing at? No, just the thought of it. It's the journey, stupid. It's the journey, <laughs> stupid, yes. That's a good way to look at it. Enjoy the journey. I, and I know if we trip, if we fall, we so badly want someone to hand us, you know, pull us up, give us a hand. But it's all good. But and you also got to remember, and if, you have, if you're a believer in God, know that God's not going to give you something that you cannot handle. It's, Tough as it may be, or as, as difficult as it is, and you get feeling like a two by four upside the head, he knows that you can handle it. And if you have the faith and you believe in God, you will get through it. And it's funny that you say that because my devotional today we talked about Ruth and how Ruth went to the fields to um, pick the, to glean the leftovers in a sense. I'm think, I can't even think of the right word. But she went in to pick the leftovers and she gave it 100%. God told her to go there and stay there, and she did. If she didn't stay there, she wouldn't have reaped the benefit of having, being able to glean for many days rather than the little scraps that she was really expecting. Mm -hmm. So she did, she gave it 100% and she was blessed for it. So good thing to remember. So don't try to escape the heart. So many times we try to escape the heart and make it easy, like with going to the field and just grabbing what she needed for that moment. But God told her, no, stay there. Right. And don't use technology. You know, nowadays we look at technology is, oh, it's going to make our lives so much easier. It's going to be so much you know, better. It's a, technology is supposed to be a tool for us to use. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. going to make a lot of things easier. It's going to make some things faster. But it's also, there's you know, the downside is, particularly with the cell phone, you're always connected. or We are always connected to the Internet, to YouTube, to the news, to work, to everything that you do. You're always going to be connected. So you know, there's a downside to technology. But... Yes, if you use it correctly, it's going to help. Right, right. And one last thing we'll leave you with today. Henry Ford asked the people, what do you want in transportation? What would work best for you? And everyone answered him, we want faster horses. They didn't even have the concept of a car at that point. They didn't know what they didn't know. So give it 100%. Learn what you can today. Do you have any other words? No, I was just going to repeat what we started talking about earlier was, Remember the choices or non-choices that you make today are your decisions for tomorrow. Yes, so make great choices today. We can't wait to hear from all of you. Let us know what choices you're making. If you found value in this, share it out, and we'd love to hear from you. So you guys make it a great day. We are in a little seclu a secluded place working on some big things that we're really excited to announce in the next probably few weeks or so. So you guys have an amazing day, and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye. I don't think it's up. We're having a little trouble with this phone. <laughs> yeah, I can't see, so I'm just smiling. <laughs> we are in the... Oh, this is good. Rotate phone while recording. I think we're still recording. <laughs> this is funny. I got a new iPhone 10. I can't, I can't figure it out. Swipe left to reveal comments. Let's just sit and talk. We can talk to everyone. Hi, right, right. hey, Nikki. Hi, this is funny. I, we don't know how to turn it off, so I guess we could <laughs> pick talking. Finish.